Mutual presents The Mysterious Traveler. This is The Mysterious Traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and uh, chill you a little. So settle back and get a good grip on your nerves, if you can. Where are we going? Well, let us say for the moment, we're taking a little trip into time. In a story I call... New Year's Nightmare. As the old year entered its last minute, the crowds at the Club Tropicana were waiting expectantly for the clock to strike midnight. At a ringside table, a lovely young woman angrily whispers to the man with her. Chris, if you take another drink, I'll leave. Oh, Judy, this is New Year's Eve. It'll be 1947 in another minute. Got to celebrate, don't I? Just one more. Just one more, just one more. That's what you always say. I wouldn't mind if it were just tonight, but you're always getting drunk. Waiter, another bottle of champagne. Nothing I say means anything to you, does it? You think because I've forgiven you a dozen times in the past, I'll do it again. But you're wrong, Chris. Happy New Year, darling. 1947 is going to be our year. No, Chris, it isn't. I won't marry a man who gets drunk in New York and wakes up the next day in another city. Oh, Judy, what are you saying? You don't mean that. You know I love you. Yes, Chris, you love me. But not enough to give up drinking. I'll miss you, Chris. Miss you terribly. But I know I'm doing the right thing. Judy, don't talk like that. I couldn't live without you. You know that. Won't you? I'm sorry, Chris. Here's your ring. Will you please take me home? You don't have to leave. If the sight of my drinking is too much for you, I'll go someplace else and do it. Martin will take you home. Happy New Year and goodbye. Finishing that drink, mister. It's five o'clock in the morning and I'm dead on my feet. Sure. Sure, I'll drink up. No matter what she says. That's right. Now, you better go home and sleep it off. Good night and a happy 1947 to you. Thanks. And the same to you. Cold. Gotta find another bar. New Year's... Got to celebrate. Hmm. Another bar across the street. Oh, got to celebrate. Hey, mister, look out for that car. You're going to get run down if you don't. Look out! My head. Oh, it feels so funny. What's that noise? Those horns. My darling, it's midnight. New Year's. Oh, my head. It's throbbing so. Where am I? How did I get here? Why, darling, you live here. Live here? What are you talking about? Charles, I'd better call Dr. Smith. You look so strange. Hello? Connect me with Dr. Smith's apartment, please. I've never seen this place before. Hello, doctor? This is Blanche Arnold. Yes, it's Charles. He isn't well. Could you come to our apartment at once? Oh, thank you. Goodbye. What do you mean, I live here? Who are you? Where am I? I'm your wife, Charles. This is our home, don't you remember? You're my wife. Well, you can't be. I'm not married. What am I doing here? What's your game? Charles, can't you remember anything about us? What are you talking about? 
I never saw you before. And why do you keep calling me Charles? My name is Chris. Chris Andrews. Chris Andrews. So that's what the initial C.A. stood for. Oh, that noise out there. What are they making such a racket for? Because it's midnight, New Year's Eve. Midnight? New Year's Eve? But it was midnight hours ago when I left the club Tropicana. What are you talking about? Oh, that must be Dr. Smith. I'll answer it. Dr. Smith? I don't know any Dr. Smith. Oh, come in, doctor. I'm so glad you're here. I think it's the amnesia. It seems to have left him all of a sudden. Charles? It's Dr. Smith. I don't know him, and I don't know you. And please stop calling me Charles. I told you my name is Chris Andrews. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Andrews? I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes. What about? Uh, tell me, Mr. Andrews, what's the last thing you remember before finding yourself in this apartment? Why, Judy. She and I were at the Club Tropicana, celebrating New Year's Eve. I see. I remember we quarreled about my drinking. I walked out on her and had a few drinks someplace else. Mm-hmm. That's all I can recall. Oh, my head. I've had hangovers, but I've never felt like this before. What time is it? Uh, It's just four minutes after 12. But it can't be four minutes after 12 New Year's Eve. That was hours ago when I left the Tropicana. Mr. Andrews, that was New Year's Eve, 1947. What do you mean, that was New Year's Eve, 1947? Uh, This is New Year's Eve, 1948. 1948? What are you talking about? It's 1947. Well, here's the morning paper. You can see the date for yourself. Thursday, January 1st, 1948. No, it can't be. It can't be. A year gone? Just like that? But where did it go? I haven't lived it yet. Perhaps you'd better let me clear up a few things for you. 1948. Uh, My name is Smith. I was a resident physician until recently at the Park Hospital. Uh, While I was on duty uh, last New Year's Day, 1947, you were brought into the hospital seriously injured, having been run over by a car. When you recovered consciousness five days later, you didn't know who you were. You were a victim of amnesia. Amnesia? Yes, and we didn't know who you were as you had no identification papers. But my wallet, uh, letters... They were gone. The only clue to your identity was a belt buckle with the initials uh, C.A. on it. We didn't know your real name, so I called you Charles for the C. Uh, Blanche was your nurse. I've always liked the name Charles. And as for your last name, we thought Arnold was as good as any. So you became Charles Arnold. But what have I been doing since the day I recovered consciousness? Well, you weren't discharged from the hospital until May. Uh, Then you went to work as an insurance clerk. As an insurance clerk? But I don't know anything about being a clerk. I'm a reporter. Well, there was no way of learning what your occupation had been. Uh, So when Blanche learned of this opening in an insurance office, you applied for the position. And that's where I've been working? Up to now? Yes. And then after you got your job, we were married. Married? Charles, I mean, Chris, don't you remember? I'm afraid, Blanche, she really can't. Married. But Judy, oh, it's like a dream. My head keeps throbbing. I keep expecting to wake up. There's that date in the paper, January 1st, 1948. Doctor, you said he might never get over his amnesia. Well, that was a strong possibility, but apparently the sounds of New Year's brought back his memory. You're going just like that. Judy, my friends, job, all gone. Doctor, where am I? I mean, what's the address of this apartment house? You're at 5718 North 13th Street, Philadelphia. Philadelphia? But how did I get to Philadelphia? Uh, That we don't know. All that I can tell you is that your accident occurred just a few blocks from here. Darling, I know what a shock it must be. Strange. You must have called me darling many times in the past. And yet this is the first time I've I've ever heard you call me that. Yes. I know. What did you say your name was? Oh, 
hello, Doctor. Come in, won't you? Thank you. How are you, Blanche? Mm, all right, I suppose. How's Chris getting along? He's fine. It's just... Why, Blanche, what's this? I've never seen you cry. Here, here. No, it's just that everything's so changed. Those six months Chris and I were married before he regained his memory were the happiest of my life. And now? This past month since he got his memory back, it's been as though I were married to a stranger. It isn't as though he doesn't try to be nice to me. But it's all so obvious. He doesn't love me. Now, Blanche, you mustn't say that. It's true, I tell you. How can a man love a woman those first six months as he loved me and then fall out of love with her when he's regained his memory? Well, you must have patience, Blanche. It will take time for Chris to adjust himself to what's happened. He fell in love with you as Charles Arnold, and I'm sure he will as Chris Andrews. You just must give him time. <laughs> Oh, just let me look at you. Oh, this can't be true. You're being here. Oh, well, it is. Ah, it's been a long time. Yes. A year and a month since New Year's Eve, 1947. Chris, what are you doing here in Philadelphia? I live here. Well, so do I. I, I got a job with Ryan and Company as a copywriter here a few months ago. Look, Judy, we can't talk here on the sidewalk. Oh, that's right. Uh, well, look, I, I live only a few blocks from here. We can go to my apartment. Oh, that's fine. There's so much I want to ask, and there's so much to tell. Here, let me have your hat and coat. Thank you. Would you like something to drink? No, I uh, don't drink anymore. Oh? Chris, you have changed. You look so much older. Well, you don't. You're as lovely as that night I saw you last. Thank you, Chris. Judy, you'll have to let me explain what happened after I left you that night at the Tropicana. If you find it difficult to believe, I won't blame you. It still seems like a nightmare to me. That night, after I left you... And so now you know everything. From the moment I last saw you to this one. Oh, no wonder you look different after having gone through an experience like that. Well, you're all right now. You you know who you are. You're happily married. You have a job. I'm not happily married, Judy. Chris, you mustn't talk like that. Surely you must have loved your wife if you married her, and she hasn't changed. Judy, there's never been anyone for me but you. You know that. And you still feel that way about me. No, I don't. When we met tonight, that old look was still in your eyes. You do care. You know you do. Please, Chris, no matter how I feel about you, it's over now. You're married, and that's all there is to it. I, I, I wish you'd go, and I don't want to see you again. Chris, where have you been? I expected you home from work hours ago. I met a friend. Oh. Oh, you look so tired. Do you feel well? Blanche, this past month I tried my best to be a good husband, haven't I? Oh, you have been, darling. No, there's something missing, and you know it. Oh, it isn't your fault, it's mine. And as a result, we're both unhappy. You mustn't say that, Chris. I feel that in time, things will be as they were when we were first married. When you were Charles Arnold. No, but they won't be, Blanche. It's no use, I tell you. Chris, who is the friend you met tonight? The girl I was once engaged to. I see. Blanche, you've got to give me a divorce. No, Chris. I'll never do that. But why? You know I don't love you. What's the sense in going on like this? Chris, when you were Charles Arnold, you did love me and we were happy together. I had your love once, and I mean to win it back. I won't give you a divorce. Hello, 
Judy? Chris. Chris, I, I asked you not to call on me again. Judy, I've got to talk to you. May I come in? Well, all right. But just for a few minutes. Thank you. Judy, even if we hadn't met again a week ago, things wouldn't have been any different between my wife and myself. I'll never love her. And I'm not going on with her. What do you mean, Chris? I'm going to leave her, Judy, and start all over someplace far away. I just came around to say goodbye. Are you set on leaving her? Yes. Nothing can change my mind about that. Now, you, you've got to understand my position, Chris. I could never be happy with you if I thought I'd been the one who came between you and your wife. But if you are going to leave her, I would like to see you again when you're free. Would you, Judy? Yes. But I don't want to see you until she's given you a divorce. A divorce? Judy, I am going to be free. Nothing's going to prevent it. Nothing. <laughs> Uh, uh, how would you like to go out tonight? Go out? Yeah, we might take in a show or go dancing. <laughs> Didn't I ever take you out when I was Charles Arnold? <laughs> Why, yes. We used to have wonderful evenings together then. Well, why not now? Unless you don't want to. Oh, Chris, there's nothing in the world I'd rather do. Hey, why the tears? Oh, it's just that I'm so happy. Oh, come here. <laughs> Oh, uh, did this Mr. Arnold ever put his <laughs> arms around you like this? Oh, yes, often. <laughs> oh, Chris, stop squeezing me so tight. Chris! Sorry, darling. Oh. Oh. You almost, you almost squeezed me to death. That's so you remember that I'm your husband and uh, not Mr. Arnold. And uh, Blanche. Oh, yes, Chris. I'm taking a week's vacation soon, um... Uh, what do you say if we go up to the Adirondack Mountains for a week of winter sport? Oh, Chris, I'd love to. Well, it'll be like a second honeymoon. Blanche, you all right? There's only a few more feet to the top. I'm coming, darling. Oh, there you are. <sighs> oh, Chris. Oh, the view is wonderful from here, isn't it? You're right. Being up here is like being alone in the world. Yes, just the two of us. Oh, this past week's been a wonderful one, Chris. I've never been so happy. Nor have I. Oh, be careful, Chris. Don't go so near the edge. That canyon's 4,000 feet deep. Oh, this ledge is perfectly safe. Come over here and take a look at the valley below. All right. Oh, please keep your arms around me, Chris. Looking down like this frightens me. There. You're safe in my uh, arms. Chris, why are you looking at me that way? What way, dear? I don't know. Is your head throbbing again? No, dear. Uh, I don't suppose you've changed your mind about giving me a divorce, have you? Giving you a divorce? But I thought we were... So happy together. Yes, that's the impression I meant people to get. Chris, you can't be serious. Why, well, everything's been wonderful these past few weeks. Oh, I see it won't be any use trying to talk you into it. What do you mean? I'm sorry, Blanche. I don't want to do this, but you've given me no alternative. It's really your own fault uh, that you must die. Let, 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 let go of me. Let, 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 no, no, you're no. struggling, darling. No one can see or hear you. And... You can't possibly escape. You can't throw me off that ledge, Elsie, then I'll hang you. I don't think so, dear. Oh, We've been so happy these Let past few weeks. Go. I'm sure the police will see it as an unfortunate no. accident. Stop but... pushing me toward the edge. Chris, no, no, I'll give you a divorce. I'll give you anything. I'm no, afraid no, it's no, too late no, for that. No. Good evening, Judy. Uh, may I come in? 
Why, yes, of course. How are you, Chris? Oh, I'm all right. I uh, want to thank you for the note you sent me uh, when Blanche died. I can't tell you how sorry I was to hear about it, Chris. Yes, it, it all happened so quickly. Mm. What have you been doing since then? Oh, just working. Trying to straighten myself out. Yes. Uh, Judy, perhaps I shouldn't talk about it now, seeing that Blanche has only been gone a month, but I've been thinking of leaving town. Will you come with me? Uh, please sit down, Chris. You make me nervous walking back and forth like this. All right. But you haven't answered my question. Well, it isn't easy to answer. Well, it would be if you said yes. Uh, I see in your eyes you mean no. Why? Chris, I've met someone else recently. Someone else? But you said if I were free, you'd marry me. I didn't say I'd marry you. I said if you were free, I'd like to see you again. But now I'm not even sure of that. You're so different from what you used to be. Stop being clever. If you didn't say you'd marry me, you, you implied as much. Please, Chris, you're, you're, you're making it so difficult for me. I'm making it difficult for you. And I suppose what I've been through doesn't count. I risked my life to get you. Risked your life? Chris, what are you saying? Are you such a fool as to believe that Blanche fell off that mountain? Didn't. Yes. And I did because you said you'd marry me if I were free. Oh, no. I meant a divorce. But she wouldn't give me a divorce. It was the only way I could gain my freedom. And now you tell me there's someone else. Oh, Chris. I did it for you. And you're going to marry me. No, I won't. If I can't have you, no one else will. Chris, what's the matter with you? Chris! We were meant for each other, darling. In life and in death. Chris, if you come any closer, I'll scream for help. No, don't. Chris, no! If you won't marry me, you'll never marry me. No. Anyone else? There. He'll never have you. Hold up in there. Miss Winters, are you all right? Call the police. I didn't want to do it, darling. But you forced me to. Oh, my head. It throbs so. Everything's like a nightmare. Open up in there. This is the police. The police? I've got to get away. Oh, they're closing in on me. There's no escape from this roof. Let's work our way down from this end of the roof to the other. They'll never take me alive. Never. I've got five bullets. Four for them and the last for myself. Take it easy now, Joe. <laughs> maybe you had me had one of those chimneys. Oh, my head. It keeps throbbing so. If I could only think. All this can't be real. It's like a horrible dream. And yet they're coming for me. Hey, there's someone behind that chimney over there. Get them to cover. They'll never take me alive, never. I'll show them. Keep down, Mike. Why don't you come and get me? If I shoot it out with me, huh? I'll show you. Come on, Mike. His gun is empty. Oh, empty. You'll never take me alive. Never. He's climbing up on the ledge. It's 15 stories down. I'm coming, Judy. I'm coming. You're going to jump. I'm falling. Falling. You'll never take me. Never. I'm falling. Falling. Doctor, the patient's recovering consciousness. Yes, you're right. He's opening his eyes. Oh, my head. It drops so. Where am I? Oh, it was a dream. Not for you. Oh, thank heaven. Now, you must be quiet. You've been in a serious accident. Accident? Yes. You were hit by an automobile New Year's morning. Uh, would you mind telling me your name? There weren't any identification papers in your clothing, and we'd like to inform your relatives of what's happened. My name? It's... It's... I can't remember my name. I see. Well, what about your address? Can you remember that? No. No, I can't remember anything. Now, you mustn't get excited. It'll all come back to you. You received a fractured skull from the accident. There was a mountain. Mountain? You, you mean you live near one? I... I don't know. There was a mountain. 
and the police were chasing me. And I jumped off a high building. It, it's all mixed up. You probably dreamed that uh, while you were unconscious. But you're all right now. Just need rest and quiet. Where am I? You're in the Park Hospital, Philadelphia. Philadelphia? What day is it? It's January 5th, 1947. It's 7.26 in the evening. And you don't know my name? No, all we have is your belt buckle with the initials uh, C.A. C.A.? Nurse, will you look after the patient now? I'll be in to see him later tonight. Yes, doctor. Are you comfortable? The initials C.A. What do you suppose they stand for? Perhaps the C is for Charles. Charles? Charles. I don't know. Well, suppose I call you Charles. Just for the time being. I always liked the name Charles. All right. What's your name? I'm Miss Thompson, but you can call me Blanche. And Charles, let me be the first to wish you a happy 1947. Mysterious traveler again. Have you enjoyed our little trip? Oh, by the way, I want to wish you all a very happy new year. And I do hope you'll be careful about making new acquaintances. And perhaps you'd better keep an eye on the old ones, too. For after all, who can foretell the future? Not even Chris Andrews, or should I say Charles Arnold, knows what's in store for him. But we do, don't we? And uh, speaking of the future, I... Oh, you're getting off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You've just heard The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and terrifying. In tonight's cast were Maurice Tarplin, Stuart Brody, Louise Fitch, Hester Sondergaard, and Mort Lawrence. Original music was played by Doc Whipple. The Mysterious Traveler is written and directed by Bob Arthur and David Cogan. (laughs) 